Hey guys, what's up? Rajat here from VFX World. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. Today I'll show you 5 the most important production tips for rotoscoping inside of Silhouette. So without wasting any time, as I always say, let's get started. <laughs> Please do subscribe my new channel the lifestyle vlogs for more fun videos vlogs and more entertaining things thank you okay so this silhouette version is provided by boris fx so thank you boris fx for providing me silhouette license uh, so today uh, as i told you i will show you five the most important production tips for rotoscoping and those are absolutely stunning and it will help you a lot for production help okay so the first point is in which frame draw your shapes for rotoscoping freshers are actually facing this issue for the first time when they are in production and even also i was when in fresher mode i also faced this issue and they thought that only the first frame or only the last frame the rotoscoping should be started or the shape should draw in only first frame or the last frame. but this is not the right thing you can draw in any frame but the main thing is you should only draw your shapes in any frame in which frame the character or the subject or the object is actually visible clearly now in this frame the character is visible completely clearly so that we can start working on this frame nothing not this frame not this frame only this frame we can start but now some footage most of the time some you got some footages where it's completely motion blurred or it's completely defocused so that in that kind of thing you should know about your shape like it's a character so like it's a head so you know about your head and just make a shape which is com actually look like a head and then just continue that shape do not change that shape too much then it will become uh, creating some wobbles on your output so <clears throat> that's the different thing and in this thing this is the main tips that you should draw your shape only the most clearest frame so for this kind of thing i'm just taking this frame and then just start it working like this i'm doing it very very roughly you can do it more precise like this so this is my shape which i already done this like this and then just press t and simply just moving it let's translate it like this and don't change the vertex for like this kind of shapes just press alt and just distort your shapes like this simple right so i think you guys already understand like in which frame you should draw your shapes okay so the second point is all about based on multi-frame as we all know multi-frame is actually help you to save your times like see this is my shape and we have this many keyframes now if i want any changes on particular area you have to do it on every frame and multi-frame can help you to create this thing in a just a second so what you have to do just press m and just simply change your shapes and just leave it like this and now see in all the frames keyframes it's it's actually happened okay but we know that right but what you don't know that multi-frame is actually work working properly when you have less keyframes now see we have some keyframes right this is very less but if you have each and every frames a single single keyframes and in like two three frames then you have no keyframe then again four five six seven eight frames you have keyframes so what happened when you turn on multi-frame and you did some changes the silhouette software will be confused like because there are so many keyframes and each and every keyframes you have separate separate informations so that's why silhouette will, uh, will, will be confused <coughs> and it will not working properly for multi-frame so the basic thing is multi-frame is actually working properly when you have less keyframes it will work 100% not 100% it's 99% time it will work properly and one percent time one percent is uh, i don't know you understand sometimes it will not work but it's really happened so i think you understand about this multi-frame technique so do not use multi-frame when you have too many keyframes use it only when you have less keyframes okay so the third one point is the defocus roto shape making process this is the most important thing and this is also for freshers because sometimes freshers are also being confused that in defocus how they actually manage their shapes because it's very critical to understand 
the shape is changing or not the shape is moving in which direction it's it's very very tough to judge so now see this is a lady character which is in defocus in background now see this character is sometimes like in this frame she is uh, looking up and in this frame she is looking down even his, her nose is also uh, coming up so now what you have to do select this frame and just press b for spline and then just start drawing your shape and make sure you have to draw it a proper shape which is actually look like a head shape okay now this is my shape now press t and simply what you have to do you just press alt and just distort your shape do not change your vertex this is my actual point do not change your vertex like this it will create some wobbles on your footage okay uh, sorry on your output so now go for going forward and just simply make it like this now see this area is going uh, outside so just press alt and just like this simply like this now going back you just have to have you can adjust it in middle frame just single keyframes like this and uh, see this is going really up so I, what I'm do I'm just making a little down and it's fine now when she turning her head the shape will also change but I will not the ch change the shape like this so simply it will be there right so see now it's actually feeling like it's a, her she is changing her face but she's turning too much see the nose area is little coming popping out so just may adjust your shape like this and for nose purpose you can do one more thing which is press b and make a little shape like this simple very little okay and uh, just move it like this so when she coming here see the little little bump will be creating for this nose okay and select all this to right now and move it like this simple right very very simple so you have to make your shapes which is actually look like a head or face or subject or object anything so and one more thing which is the most important thing do not change your vertices for defocus roto so the next point is all about a proper swapping okay so as you all know in motion blur the high motion blur now see this area is in high motion blur okay so when you're doing a swapping you actually can't understand that in previous frame in and in next frame where you should put your shape and and how it will get a proper motion blur so i have an idea just press b on your keyframe on your sorry on your keyboard and then just start drawing your shape like this and as you all know in motion blur you have to put your shape in middle frame so that it will be coming proper motion blur now this is my shape okay i'm doing it little roughly you can do it more precise now select t now i need a proper motion blur and it will be a proper uh, output as well so just i'm what i'm doing select this and select all this and putting my mouse over here okay and i will not move my mouse cursor from here i'm just changing my frames by pressing z it will go back now see it's now the previous frame and by pressing shift and the navigation keys i'm just changing my uh, keyframe position uh, sorry my shape's position like one frame two three four five five frame is good okay now go to the main frame see the mouse cursor is still now on their own space and then go to the next frame by pressing x and simply press shift and navigation it and by one two three four five okay so right now in next frame it's also in five frames and the previous frame is also in five frames so both frames are right now in same exactly same space so it means like in middle frame it will coming motion blur properly okay so now you have to turn on this motion blur and from here also the motion blur option and when you see see the motion blur is actually blended properly like this now see we as you all know we need more motion blurs here so what you can do select all this and simply press multi frame yes multi frame is also working for this kind of thing and when you change this like this if you can see in previous frame it's also being changed but yes sometimes the changes will be more so just select this keyframes and manually you can adjust it like this simply right 
so now when you check this in middle frame now see this is very far so just select all this and inside it now see this is good right so by using this method you can actually adjust your motion blurs properly so what i'll show you just put your mouse cursor over here and just go to your previous frame and next frame so it means like mouse cursor is actually navigate you to navigate your shapes that it will go or it will move a proper positions or proper uh, what you can say if the shapes are right now in their proper space to create a particular proper motion blur on the middle frame okay so the fifth point is the most important point for hair roto as you all know that hair roto is the most difficult roto ever but when you started knowing about hair roto and when you start researching about hair roto it will a really interesting thing okay so the thing is i'm what i'm trying to show you now see there are some uh, what you can say the, the small details okay so in production what i will do in the small details we are making shapes like this and just press escape so it means it's like open poly this is good when these kind of shapes are there the open poly will actually help you a lot for creating such a good shapes but most of the artists are doing one thing which is very very wrong the shapes for the main hairs okay they are actually doing the shape now see i am trying to make this shape okay they are actually doing the shape uh, like this okay so what I'm trying to tell you that they are doing one mistake for this tip area. They're doing most of the artists are doing this kind of shape. This is actually very wrong. So what's the correct thing is now I'm showing you. Now see this is a hair also. Now select this, select this, select this. And in the end part, you should draw it like this. So it's actually being look like a hair. So when you put it in alpha, now just fix it a little bit. When you put it in alpha now see this is also a shape and this is also a shape okay so it means whenever you are doing your hair roto and for the shapes you should draw your shape which is actually look like a hair so when you saw in alpha now see it's really look like a hair the, always the hair tip should be sharp okay not like this and this is the actually the thing which the artist didn't know and they are just doing it roughly and yes sometimes what happened when you saw the output it will not uh, being so bad but the technique was wrong so the main concern is please don't do with the wrong technique always try to create shapes by using proper techniques okay okay so the last one is a bonus point okay the bonus point is always before doing roto please go and ask about the comp requirement because without knowing your comp requirement please don't start roto otherwise you are doing your roto some areas which is actually don't required and you are doing it blindly so the main concern is please go and ask that why you are doing that particular part roto which they provided for rotoscoping and when you know like see the, i am rotoing this character the reason is sometimes they are adding some background over there or they are doing some cc for this character that is fine but if they're asking about this this signboard okay then please go and ask that why you are uh, asking me about this uh, signboard is this really required if they said yes there are something over here they will put some lighting there they will put some characters behind this something else then this is fine but sometimes what happened in brief they just mark it roughly but what happened actually some parts they actually didn't require but you are doing it very precise and you are taking so much time for that perfect okay guys i think this five in fact this six most important production tips will actually help you a lot for your future and best of luck okay so i think this video is absolutely stunning and if yes then don't forget to comment below and i'm waiting for your prestigious comments and if you like this video then don't forget to subscribe like comments and share and please press the bell icon for the further notification and please do subscribe my new channel the lifestyle vlogs for more fun videos, vlogs and fun things. I will see you in my next video. Till then, have fun, stay healthy and bye-bye.